Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Buckeye Politics. It's me, your favorite Ohioan. So, oh, uh, we are. I, did, I really did not want to do this, but so we have the everyone's favorite man child over here, Wyatt Tomlin, um, who is a fellow election YouTuber from the great state of Ohio. S same as me. He's also from North. He's uh, he's from Ohio. Same as me. And you know, I've known he's he's a very left leaning election predictor. He's literally the anti me. Like I'm the very based, incredibly accurate tradcath conservative uh, political YouTuber from Ohio, and then we have this guy who's like the uh, the liberal Bernie Sanders type who uh, copes a lot and seethes a lot based on a lot of his videos we've seen. So anyway, that's besides the point, because this guy, he made a video a couple days ago, he was like reacting to my Senate prediction, the most recent one, he was like saying, this guy is mentally out of his, this guy's out of his mind, he's, he, he, look at this, like he's, this guy has a, has a state, has a state tilt Republican, even though like half of the all other election predictors agree it's going to be tilt Republican. So I made this epic meme, you know, like we do, we made, we, we respond with memes, because this guy, he was going all in, you know, I was just sitting there and this guy was going all in, I barely even talked to this guy, I've commented on like two of his videos, and I've said like, maybe you should change this, or like cope, because that's not going to happen, and then he responds with that 10 minute long rant, dissing me, so I respond with this very epic meme, you know, that we, you know, as we do. And we show, you know, uh, we have over a thousand subscribers. He has 180, partially because I've shouted him out a few times and I've talked about his stuff. Um, he makes videos for Tim Ryan, thinking he's helping it out. I actually make phone calls for JD Vance. He's done YouTube for almost three years, has 185 subs. I've done YouTube for a year. I have 1.1K. I touch grass daily. I, I, I'm, I do stuff. He makes 30 long election videos. And this kid's like 12 as well. Like, this kid's literally 12 years old. And he goes on, he spends his entire day on his computer reading about elections and politics. Like, that is so sad. I feel bad for him, honestly. Like, I, I, that's why I didn't want to do this. Because, like, he has, <laughs> like, he spends his entire day, if you look at his videos, he's, his entire screen is just tabs open with random elections and Wikipedia sites. And it's very sad, honestly. Like, I feel bad for him. That's why I didn't want to do this. But... So I responded with this meme. I called it a day. I was like, you know what? We, were, we had to respond because, you know. And then he, I left it at that. And then he replies with this video. So let's take a little peek. Let's take a little peek at it. This guy sent me, DM'd it to me. So let's watch this a very epic video. No sound. Thought Morgan Harper would win. You did think Morgan Harper would win. This you? Yeah, I had Joe Blystone winning the Ohio governor election. All right, let's go back real quickly. Yeah, so the, Joe Bly, I had Joe Blystone winning the um, governor race in this election night, but now if you actually like use your brain and look back, that was not to completely unheard of back back then. That p was uh, seven months ago. This was back in November. This was right at this was there was the p earliest polling from January. Blystone was the polling isn't here exactly. Blystone was pulling about twenty percent or so, and even February, like Blystone was pulling at about twenty percent when that vid when that was video was made video was made. Unfortunately, it only they don't really show the polls from between here, but there were several polls between um, May and January that showed Blystone at about 20%, with B DeWine probably losing, and Renasi also at around 20% or so. So this was actually really not that unheard of, like, at the time. Like, nobody questioned this at the time. A lot of people were saying, you know, Blystone could seriously win this thing. You know, he was running a very grassroots campaign, and seven months ago, it was not out of the question that Joe Blystone could win. And also, this was not a governor prediction. This was for the Senate race. I just threw this in there on a whim. I literally just saw, oh, Blystone's surging. He seems kind of base. I'll throw him on the Google Slides. That is nothing to do with my actual prediction for the election. Like, this was seven months ago, before the race even kicked off. This is before Trump made an endorsement. He didn't make an endorsement for the governor race. He made one for the Senate race. But he didn't make he didn't make a race for the governor election yet. People thought he would. DeWine was underwater. Renacy was still probably, according to this, going to win. So much change between this and that. It's not even an even comparison. You're, you made a video having Morgan Harper, who received 17% of the vote in her primary, beating Tim Ryan, less than a month before the election. I make a video where Joe Blystone was surging at the time, seven months before the election, and uh, you're like, <laughs> look, I'm going to own you because I threw this out of this picture from an uh, election night you made seven months ago when I, one month ago, made a video uh, having Morgan Harper win when she has never been polling more than 20%. All right, yeah, yeah, you really got me there. Solid own, solid own. So he's going to LARP about this for a little while. I've already, I've already watched his video. He's going to show the meme again. Spot on. He's going to show it again. Like, this you again? Like, oh, you got me there. I already explained that. The thing is making videos with views helping the Tim Ryan campaign. Okay, this is... Now, he, go, he cuts to his TikTok now, I believe. I'm not a degenerate piece of crap, so I don't use TikTok. Yeah, this is TikTok, actually, so I couldn't tell, actually, for a while. Because I'm not, uh, like, a bad person. So he posts these... His TikToks apparently have, like, over 1K views. And from what I've seen, that's not even, like, that impressive. Like, TikTok, it's not too difficult to blow up on. And honestly, TikTok election predictions are literally the biggest memes you've ever seen. Like, t making election 
predictions and like videos on TikTok if in the election community is literally a meme. Like, like th this is not known. The fact that you're big on election TikTok tells me t tells me even more than if you didn't post this at all. And congratulations, your videos got a few k views um, by liberals who think that uh, Kentucky's gonna go blue because um, Charles Booker got a resounding applause because at the, like a Democratic convention. Like, I'm sorry, but come on, come on, man, you're better than this. Like this thing, this kid, he's yeah, he's actually kind of smart too. That's why I feel bad because he actually like he knows a decent amount about politics. I was gonna circle this, uh, the amount of views again, but he knows a decent amount about politics. Like, like he's for his age, it's actually kind of impressive. But he wastes it. It would buy <laughs> this. Like he posts a TikTok of Tim Ryan beating J.D. Vance in the Ohio Senate race, despite the fact that Tim Ryan's own campaign polls have him winning by one to two points. I think one had him up by like two or three. So Tim Ryan's own polls have him winning by two to three points uh, when all, th in his own polls. That's horrible. That means even in Tim Ryan's polls, I, liked, I, I had 3% to, if it's an internal, I had 3% for the other candidate. That means in Tim Ryan's own polls, polls paid for and conducted by and with his campaign, it is a dead heat. Biden is underwater in Ohio. Biden has like a 30% approval rating in Ohio. If that, he's not, Tim Ryan is not going to win. <laughs> I'm sorry. I really am. I'm sorry that your 12-year-old mind cannot comprehend modern American politics, but Tim Ryan is not going to win. Cope and seethe. <laughs> your video that gets a bunch of views on TikTok means literally nothing to me. Congratulations. All right, let's look at these. Oh, look at Tim Ryan. Oh, he's so cool. 100, 405 likes, 60 comments of liberals saying yes. Owned me. Owned Buckeye with facts and logic. Look at this own. Oh, wow. Look at all these views he got. Because he fill it color, colored stuff on a map. Oh, jeez. Wow. I'm so owned right here. Oh, wow. He has Dr. Oz losing by two points. Oh, Tim Ryan is up by one. Tim Ryan is leading by one point, And it got... I can't even read that because of how poorly edited the video is. Because the text blends in. 607 likes. 607 likes. Well, that is very impressive, my friend. Very impressive for TikTok. The, the most disrespected election community across every platform. Like, TikTok election predictions are literally memes. Like, you think this is an own? You're literally proving to me that the people who know the least about politics like your stuff. I'm not sure how that's really an own. But, you know, we'll keep watching. I digress. Let's keep watching. Wow, you're showing the same poll over and over that was conducted by Tim Ryan's own campaign. And you're circling again. Very base, very epic, I see. All right, now we're back to the meme. <coughs> I was going to show my Senate prediction now. Okay. Oh, he's gonna, he, he hates this tilt our Pennsylvania for both Senate and um, Governor. So, all right, let's look at this. So, John Fetterman, he, uh, they have the polls beating Dr. Oz. It's literally June. Polls in June mean nothing. Polls in June of 2020 had Arkansas being competitive for Biden. Polls in Ar June had Arkansas being close for Biden. Arkansas is one of the most Republican strongholds out there. Polls in June mean literally nothing. Polls in June for the Virginia gubernatorial election had Youngkin losing by like 10 to 15 points. And then he came up and won. Polls in June mean virtually nothing. If this was like a month before the Senate race, this might be an own. Because, you know, I might be coping a little bit. Because, but I really do think Oz is going to pull is going to do well. I think he's going to start doing better in the polls as time goes on. Early polls typically favor the Democrats, as we saw in 2020. And by the time election night rolls around in, with Virginia in 2021, with Trump and nationwide in 2020, sure, Trump didn't win, but he, Biden did not win in the landslide. Three states separated by about, about 10,000 votes each is all that kept Trump out of office. So really, all I'm saying is... Your trusting polls conducted six months before the election is out. Like I, I'm sorry. I just, no. This is if your only source of owning me is showing John Fetterman winning by five points or so, two points, four points, ten points, and then six points. He's up by what five points overall. So John Fetterman leads by five points overall in June polling. In a red wave environment, that's probably going to be R plus six, R plus seven. That's Oz plus one, R plus Oz plus one, Oz plus two. Like. This is not known. Polls are going to tighten up. P things change. It's six months out, man. Like, come on. This is not known. Polls always favor the Democrats early on. This is not a surprise to me. You think when I saw these polls, I was like, oh my gosh, Oz is going to lose. Blue wave imminent. No, I said, you know what? That makes sense. We'll see what happens here. And the, sure, it's not per it's not what I'd like to see for Oz. I like Oz a lot. And sure, it's not what I would like to see. But it's what I expected to see. The polls always favor the Democrats, especially in early polling. The fact that Fetterman's only up by five, six, seven points right now. Except for that one outlier, which we'll have to see what happens. That could could be a could could be an outlier, could be normal. We'll have to wait and see. 
And one of these polls, actually, this most recent one that has Fetterman at 50 and Oz at 44, that poll has Ron DeSantis losing. Ron DeSantis losing. So, yeah, if you want to know about these early pollsters favoring the Democrats, that's what all I got to say. So that poll is actually an outlier in Florida, so throw that one out. Let's see, there's basically, if you throw the top poll out, because it literally has DeSantis losing, that means there's really only three polls conducted. One has Fetterman up by nine. One has Fetterman up by four. One has Fetterman up by two. Throw that together, Fetterman's up by, what, five, six, four, five, six-ish? R plus six environment, inflation. Oz actually starting to campaign. More Republicans turning around to Oz. Oz is actually one of the most disliked Republicans um, to win a general. He only won his primary by, like, 900 votes. You think all those Republicans that voted for um, McCormick or Kathy Barnett are going to suddenly turn around and say, okay, Oz is the winner. we got to vote for him. No, they're going to be undecided. They're going to say, well, I didn't vote for Oz. I, I'm not, I, I don't like Oz on this and this policy. I'm, not, I'm undecided. Or maybe even a couple may say, you know what, Fetterman. So it makes sense Oz is, it makes sense Oz is losing. This is not an own. Literally anyone with a brain expected Oz to be down in early polls. This is on own. I, I digress, though. Let's keep watching. Okay, so he's going to show Arizona now. And he's going to show the same thing. Polls from 2021. There is a poll from 2021 here. A poll from when Biden was still popular in here. You cannot trust these early polls. Early polls mean literally nothing. 18% undecided. 608 likely voters. These are not even people who say that who are registered to vote. These are just 608 random people. And Mark Kelly is up by with 50%. That's actually that's actually pretty bad. Actually, early polls typically favor the Democrats, and De and Mark Kelly only being at about four, being under well, under 50% is actually not a very good thing. That means that he's already maxed out with Democrats. That means a Republican has got to unite around a candidate, and he's done. And Blake Masters may seriously do that. So I digress. Let's keep looking. I was going to scroll down, show me more polls that show. Blake Masters, the likely Republican candidate, let's see, one poll from 2021 has him down nine, one poll from this year, I'm not sure exactly when it was conducted, um, has him down by, like, 15 or so, so, 17 points, that's with 19% undecided, er, only 608 likely voters, I'm not too worried about Blake Masters, like I said, you could, early polls mean basically nothing, like, if you look at, look at literally every single election for the past 10 years, polls early on, most of them, especially more recent ones, like Virginia especially, New Jersey, Republicans always outperform them, and early on, they're always poor, they're always like heavily favoring the Democrats. This is not surprising me in the slightest. And when the generic nat national environment and the, con gen when the generic congressional ballot is R plus 1, R plus 2, and Biden is at like 33% approval rating nationwide, I'm really not all that worried about these early polls. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm only ranting to disprove the narrative about early polling, so... You know, I'm really not that concerned. All right, he's going to show me more polls conducted from 2021. Florida safe red R plus 15. Okay, so he's talking about the Senate election, and he doesn't know this. I use R plus 10 margins. If you actually watch the video, I say that. My entire community knows this. The people who watch my videos know this. So, <laughs> Florida safe red R plus 15. I use R plus 10 as safe. Uh, most people, some people use R plus 15. Some people use R plus 10. I use R plus 10. So R plus 10, Florida being safe red, is pretty much universally agreed on. So this isn't an own. I, if it was, if I did use R plus 15, I would have Florida likely. So this is just him misunderstanding what I say frequently and which well known in among my community. But you know, he probably doesn't watch my video, so I'll give him. I will just respond to that. So this is this is just him misunderstanding. Yeah, he's gonna show me polls now. Ruby is up by six. Ruby is up by like 20. But he's not gonna count these. Val Deming still has a chance because this. Look at this poll. Because because look, he's she's Rubio's leading, but Val Deming still has the chance. No, she doesn't. Early polls favor Democrats. There's a poll having her leading. And if I were to do this, the opposite of that, he would be saying the same thing. He'd be saying, uh, so, yeah. Not Long story short, I use R plus 10 as safe. I'm different than the election community. This is probably just him misunderstanding. But still, I have to address it because if not, he would be like, uh, safe Florida. Moderate, kind of centrist guy. But I think once Lou Bar, once uh, Doug Mastriano kind of exposes that, and once the campaign kind of kicks off even more, any Mastriano. Is this kid's audio just trash? Do I actually sound like that? Like, I feel like I s when I watch my videos, I actually think I sound decently. But this video, his audio clip of me sounds horrible. So, all right. I see. Okay. <laughs> I have to watch this crappy audio. I apologize. Mastriano begins focusing on core issues. I think Shapiro is going to lose. Uh, Mastriano, like I said, he's this great can. He's a solid candidate for Pennsylvania and a Republican. Oh, no. He's going to show uh, going to show me videos of Doug Mastriano at the Capitol. It's not like basically any Republican you can think of has supported January 6th. And uh, I don't know what this article from NBC News is. He sees parallels to Hitler's grab in, in Capitol Riot. I'm not really sure like what that article was about. I don't read NBC because I'm not a piece of shit. 
But, um, yeah, I don't really know what this is supposed to mean. Basically, any polit Republican politician you can think of was at the Capitol. Like, there's plenty of Republican politicians that were there. There were plenty of Democrats that were there. There were plenty of Democrats that were at Black Lives Matter rallies, and people said it would, it, it would hurt them, and it didn't. Is this isn't an own. No one cares about January 6th. Have you looked at the polling? You love looking at polling. We saw your, you saw your, the polling for the Pennsylvania Senate race for Oz and even Mastriano. We're about to see in a second. The Mastriano is going to lose huge because of polling. If you look at polling, what is the big issue that people care about? It's like inflation. It's Ukraine to an extent. It's domestic policies. No one cares about January 6th. Literally no one. I'm sorry that your MSNBC addicted brain thinks that people care about January 6th when gas is over $5 a gallon and there's no baby formula. Like, I'm sorry you think that, but it's not. No one cares about January 6th. If Mastriano focuses on inflation and, and kitchen table issues like, most, like he has started to do now that he's won the primary, he will win. That this is not up for debate. People, most people agree on this. Now I agree. If Mastriano ran on nothing but the 2020 election, he would he might lose. Then you have a point there. But he's not. Thus far, he has shifted his rhetoric from 2020 election, more to just generic Republican stuff and focusing on veteran affairs, uh, inflation, crime, taxes. Ta I don't like to talk about taxes, but it is true. He does. He has talked about that, and he's doing fine in Pennsylvania. So, like, I'm not sure what this is supposed. This is how this is supposed to be an own because no one cares about January sixth. You love talking about polling until it, until it shows that no one cares about January sixth. And uh, <laughs> yeah. So let's see. Let's watch some more. Can wave the year. Um, I think he should have no problem winning by about a point or so. Probably. Right, now he's going to show me the favorability ratings of Doug Mastriano and Josh Shapiro. Now Doug Mastriano is a 44% unfavorable, while he is a 37% favorable. While Josh Shapiro has a 37% favorable to 34% unfavorable. Also, not really sure how this is like supposed to mean anything. Like, this is just there are favorability ratings right now. If Biden has a favorability rating in Pennsylvania of like 35%, and if Josh Shapiro runs on being friends with Biden and um L and just constantly LARPing on LGBT stuff, he's not gonna win. His favorability is gonna shoot right up. And even then, 47%. Like Doug Mastriano is like he's well known, but he's not that well known. Shapiro is pretty well known, so being on under 50% is pretty bad actually and I was gonna show me some recent polls having Shapiro up by three up by three and up by four how is this an own Mas Mastriano is down by three or four points in early polling which always favors Democrats and he's also actually switching and focusing on core issues Mastriano is <laughs> this is actually great news for Mastriano I didn't even know polls were this good for Mastriano this is epic Mastriano is in a perfect in a great position now <laughs> I'm not yet actually like unironically this is good if Mastriano is only down by three or four in early polling that's really good for Mastriano and it shows that this favorability rating is crap and people don't care I'm not saying Doug Mastriano is going to be this crazy well liked guy but he's going to win if his polling only has him down three or four going into the election so let's take a look see a little less off point. the video and that's the video the video is over um not much to say there uh it was an interesting video he really got me only with facts and logic um Let's go down. So I do want to say thank you guys, uh, all of you defending me in the comments. I love you guys so much. All I, I I got this. Someone sent me this video and I clicked on it, and there were seven comments at the time that said Lamau cope and stuff like like Buckeye is a better YouTuber. People only watch you because they laugh at you. Stuff like that. You guys rock. Like I I love you guys so much. You we 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 love to do a little bit of trolling. We like to troll the libs. So I love seeing all your guys' comments. He actually deleted them. He, we heard his feelings, so he deleted all the comments, except for my friend GOP Josh here. I love how he kept that one. He's attacking the audio, which the audio was pretty crappy, not even going to lie. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for being the greatest community on YouTube and sticking up for me, your dear friend, and your favorite Ohioan. So thank you for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed. And Wyatt Tomlin, honestly, I have nothing against you. Like, I, I, I might feel kind of harsh, but you started this. You made a 10-minute long video, dissertation video about why I was... Uh, mentally uh, retarded and not there mentally about and because I thought a, a, an election would go one way or another go outside please go outside honestly I'm sorry thanks for watching this video hope you enjoyed I'll see you in the next one